Hello and welcome to the Car Care Nut channel. In today's video, we're going to be starting out a new series on my channel on Toyota maintenance. Now, I did talk about how to maintain your Toyota, the general information in a previous series, which I'll leave right here. But today, we're going to start another series, the DIY edition, how you can do all this maintenance yourself. Starting with the most basic maintenance and the most important maintenance, oil changes. I recently talked about how not timely oil changes could be the number one cause of oil consumption or oil burning. So in this video, we're going to go over how to change your oil and the oil filter yourself using very basic tools and all the tips and tricks that go along with it. But before we get started, if you're new to the channel, welcome. Consider subscribing to the channel. Check out some of my other videos. If you're a returning subscriber, thank you so much for watching another one of my videos. And without further ado, let's dig right into it. A small overview before we get started. So I recommend you change your engine oil every 5,000 miles or six months whichever comes first. Now, a lot of people have asked me, if I only have 1,000, 2,000 miles in this six months, should I still change my oil? Absolutely, and you actually should change it at six months. I understand that some of the recommendations are 10,000, one year, I'll leave that one up to you, but I will say this, just like I said in the previous video, you have to understand the special operating conditions for oil changes, which would immediately put you back at 5,000, six months. So play it safe, go with that. Having said that, the tools you will need, all Toyota drain plugs are 14 millimeter bolts, the oil filter, there are two style of oil filters. There's a spin-on filter, and then there's the canister style. In this video, I'm gonna focus on the canister style because that's a very common one, and that's one that's unconventional. The spin-on filter is very simple. You take it out, put the new one in, have a nice day, we're done. But the canister one, some people have issues with, so I'm gonna address them in this video. Another thing you want to do before we get started is lift the car. Now. I'm using a quick jack lift, which lifts the whole car off the ground. But in your case, if you can get underneath the car, if your car is high enough where you can get underneath it comfortably, you might not even need to lift it. But for the sake of oil changes, most Toyota drain plugs are toward the back of the engine. So when you lift the front of the car, you're actually gonna angle it where it would drain more oil out of the engine. So actually, I recommend you just lift the front of the car, safely secure it with jack stands, and then you're good to go for the oil change. So the first thing before we get started, and I know this one might be a little odd, but for professionals, the number one thing for junior mechanics to forget is put oil in the car when they're doing a service, believe it or not. So a system that we've developed in our dealership so you would never forget, or you have a systematic approach to this, is take the filler fill cap and place it right on top of the hood latch. That way you can close the hood without putting the oil fill cap on. And then you know when the fill cap is off, you did not add oil. The minute you add oil, put the fill cap on and life is good. I've always done this and I know doing it yourself might not be the case, but I'm just telling you all the tips and tricks that we've learned doing these day in and day out. One thing I'll mention about the oil fill cap. Did you know that this oil fill cap has a little gasket? So you don't have to replace this gasket every time, but if you start noticing oil oozing around or oil fill hole, if you would, replace this gasket. Here's a part number for that little gasket. The common reason this gasket gets crushed too much and now you have oil seeping all over the place here making a little mess is people over tightening these when they put them on. There's no reason to over tighten it. As soon as you feel the gasket engage, we're done. Okay, so here's your drain plug. Here's the oil filter. The car we're working on today, by the way, is a 2014 Toyota Corolla. This is the 2ZR 1.8 liter engine. Some of the other cars, especially the 2AR FE, the 2.5, and the 2GR FE, the V6, this canister will be somewhere around here. Uh, every engine will be a little bit different, but they're mostly around this vicinity. Some of the newer cars will have a cover covering this whole area. Here's an example of that, a few screws that you take out 
and you expose the filter and the drain plug. Now, the first thing we're going to do is take out the oil filter. Let that drain out. You're going to want a, a drain, put it underneath so you wouldn't make a mess on the floor. This is the official Toyota tool to take off these oil filters. I will leave the part number for it. It's a little expensive. Maybe not the best choice for DIY because it's too much money. This is for professionals, but you can get any tool for these oil filters. Just make sure you get a good one. We're going to put it on. And take it off. Going to take the oil filter off, let it drain. There we go. Let the oil filter drain a little bit and take it off. Now we're going to prep that filter in a little bit. Now let's take the drain plug and let the oil drain. 14 millimeter drain plug bolt. Gonna break it loose. And this is the part that will make a little bit of a mess. Because as you capture that drain plug and try not to get as much oil as po on your hands as possible. This is kind of a practice one. There it goes. Folks, always use gloves. There's no reason to have these harsh chemicals on your hands. Always use gloves for your safety to protect your skin. Now we're gonna let this oil drain as long as possible. The idea here is you wanna start with that. You're not a shop. You're not in a hurry to do this really quick. So you're gonna to wanna to let this oil drain until it's literally drip, drip, or even stops. Don't be in a rush, let it drain as long as possible to get every last drop out of the old oil. So we're going to leave this drain and we're going to go and work on that oil filter. Alright folks, let's prep the oil filter. Now one thing I will say about the canister style oil filters, in case you have a car that doesn't have this style canister. This is the closed style where you have nothing here. There's a different style mainly on the V6 on the 2AR FE engines, they'll have a cap here. Now that cap, you're supposed to take it off and put the tool that comes with the filter. Folks, nobody does that. It's up to you if you want to do that, but leave that cap alone. It does have an O-ring that beh that's behind it that comes with the filter. I've seen cars go 400,000 miles on that same uh, cap, same O-ring, never leaked, never had issues. And one thing I will say that I, a common, another common issue I see with those, don't over tighten them, never, because these are notorious to crack, they're plastic, and some people have actually upgraded to a metal one aftermarket. Don't do that. These filters, if they're never over tightened, they actually last the life of the ca car. They're very high quality plastic. They are really made to last. Again, remember, we're working on Toyotas here. On these filters, we're gonna pull the oil filter element out, just like so, put it to the side. You have one big O-ring here. We're gonna use a little screwdriver, take it out. There it goes. Now, here's the new filter for this car. The new filter will come with the element and one O-ring. On the ones that come with two O-rings, we're going to slide this filter on real quick. The ones that come with two O-rings, that O-ring is for the cap that comes here on that style filter. Folks, I wouldn't change that. If you want to change it, you just use a 3 8 uh, ratchet to take it off, but I wouldn't, honestly. We never do that at the dealership. We never had any issues. It's up to you if you want to change it. I wouldn't. So let's take this o take this o-ring out we're going to install this o-ring make sure this o-ring goes in the right groove at the very bottom just like so now most people will go and get a special lubricant for this and clean it and lubricate the o-ring folks all you need is the the oil that's already on the filter just wipe it down and that's it this filter is ready to be installed back in the car so let's go do that All right, folks, so the drain plug gasket usually either gets stuck here or, on, or comes out with the drain plug. So we're just going to use your same wrench. We're going to pop that gasket off. And then one thing I will tell you about these gaskets, 
This is a blue gasket. I'm gonna make sure you see it in the camera. This is a blue gasket. If you have a black one, they have to be replaced. The black ones are non-reusable. These blue ones, they are reusable. However, there are a few cents. I would just replace it every time. So we're gonna put that gasket on the drain plug. And we're gonna reinstall the drain plug. And you notice before I reinstall it, the oil is all done draining. Now it's down to a small drip. So we're gonna install your drain plug. Folks, you can use torque specs and this and that, but just common sense, common mechanical sense. Tighten it till it stops and we're good to go. Don't over tighten it, don't under tighten it. And if you're, I will leave the torque spec for that on the screen. Wipe it down. And now let's go install our oil filter. Here's the oil filter. We're gonna tighten it down until, until it gets tight. Folks, on the oil filters, if you are not sure how tight is tight, you can use a torque wrench and torque it down. It's really low torque, but here's a little trick. Not every, I don't want you spending a small fortune on tools. So you're gonna tighten it and you watch that sleeve of the filter. Remember, this filter is not, is not sealed by force of tightening. It has that O-ring. So let's install it. When it stops like that, that's it. We're gonna just let it go. There's no need to tighten it because actually this surface is not the sealing surface. It's the O-ring inside. All we're doing here is just giving it a quick snug and that's it. Do not over tighten it. But if you wanna use a torque wrench and torque it, here's a torque spec. At this point, we're all done underneath the car. Let's wipe down our filter. If you want to clean all this better, use, you can use brake cleaner. It'll melt down the oil and clean everything nice, but if you're working in a closed garage like me, or if you're working in the winter with a closed door, that brake cleaner might, might be much to smell already with the sm smell of the oil. So it's up to you on that one. At this point, we're all done. Let's go add our oil. One note about oil. Now folks, you can use whatever oil you are used to using. The official Toyota oil that we're using today is you can buy it from any dealership. Another thing about oil is the oil from the dealership is supplied by Mobile One. So it's basically a similar oil. If you're used to using a brand, go ahead. If you're not sure, just use the Toyota oil or use Mobile One or use any of the good brands. That's, I'll leave that one up to you. One thing I will say, always use the oil that is on the fill cap. Now, yes, the owner's manual will give you sometimes a few choices. That's again, up to you. You gotta do your research, but if you wanna play it safe, always use the oil that's on the cap or some of them will have a sticker somewhere telling you what oil to use. So let's go ahead, I'm using Toyota oil. By the way, this is a fancy funnel that screws onto the cap. You don't need something like that. Always use a funnel. I don't understand mechanics that think it's a her heroic thing to just spill oil all over the place just to perfectly go without a funnel. Just use a funnel, folks. It's not a challenge here. We're just trying to get the job done efficiently, cleanly, and without issues. So let me add the oil and we'll finish this up. So oil capacities on most cars are never an even number. Some of them are, but most of them are not. So this car takes 4.4 and I'm working on a guide and a website for all these capacities and which filter goes where. But for this car, it's 4.4 quarts. I already added four. Most of these Toyota bottles and actually most of general oils, they're marked right here on the bottle. So right now we added the 0.4, ready to go. One thing about oil changes, folks, that you gotta be aware of, we're now we're gonna start the engine, let it run for a minute, shut it off, check the oil level. When you're doing this with the cold engine, your oil level will be between empty and full on the dipstick. You do not want it full when the engine is cold because then you actually overfill the car. And that's a common mistake that I see when people do oil changes. Remember folks, oil expands. If you want to really check your oil level, if it's full, check it when the engine is fully warmed up and it should be full. 
when it's cold, it's going to be less than full and usually somewhere halfway between the full and the empty mark on the dipstick. Having said that, we're all set. Check your oil level. All Toyotas will have a dipstick, except the uh, Supra, the new Supra, which is a BMW, but we won't be too hard on them for that. But at this point, you're all done. It would be a good idea to check your washer fluid, add if needed, check your tire pressures, check your air filter and cabin filter, which I will come up with future videos how to check those. And there's that. So if you wanted to replace the gasket for the fill cap, here's how that gasket looks like. First, use a screwdriver. Let's pop this gasket off, like so. Some of them will be pretty stuck in there. If you, if you end up breaking it, that's, that's usually what ends up happening, but this one is not too bad. I'm just replacing it for the video here. There it goes. Now we're gonna, one thing I want you to note on this, do you see that groove? This one? On the other side, there's no groove. The groove goes on the outside. This will go right there, just push it in. And that's it, because that groove is actually what, what seals. At this point, the last thing we need to do is to reset the maintenance light. On most Toyotas, a little bit older ones, not the very newest ones, you're going to turn the key, you're going to change your od odometer trip to trip A, we're going to turn off the key, hold the odometer reset button, and turn on the key, and that'll reset the maintenance data. On some of the newer cars, you have to go through the menus, go to settings, vehicle settings, and then maintenance schedule, and that's how you reset it. So there you have it, folks. Now you know how to change your oil, your oil filter, which oil to use, and some tips and tricks in between. I hope this video was helpful. I hope you learned something new. Look, folks, I know oil changes are very basic, but if you're just starting out working on your own cars, this is something I highly recommend you do on your own. Nobody will take care of your car like you do. Do everything right, take your time. Now you have this video to give you more instructions and information. So do your oil changes yourself. That's a great start to maintaining your car. If you like this video, consider giving it a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, consider subscribing. Check out some of my other videos. May the Lord bless you and keep you, and you have a wonderful day.